Hello, dear friends. May God bless you all. And may the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God, come upon everyone who is participating in this live broadcast or those who will be watching it later on. May the Spirit of God attend to all of your needs, all of you, regardless of your religion, your beliefs, your sexual orientation, regardless of anything. God does not impose any restriction in order to fulfill His word, as long as there is belief, faith in His word, in His promises. So many people, unfortunately, do not understand the secret of faith, of the greatness of faith. Faith is like this. Whether you deserve it or not, if you believe, you receive. If you deserve but you didn't believe, you won't receive. Isn't it nice? It's very nice. Very nice. I was praying, crying out to God, Oh my God, come on, it's not possible. How come I have this flu that is bothering me so much? And then I said, why don't you heal me? Then the Holy Spirit said to me, I already healed you. My son already carried all infirmities, curses, pains that there is on earth were nailed to the cross on the body of my son. The only thing you need to do is to take possession of what is already a right of yours. So physical health as well as spiritual health depends on faith, on this belief. And as we have shown, faith must be raw. It cannot be delicate. It cannot be religious. Sometimes the person thinks that because they are religious, meaning they go to church, they are religious, they fulfill their religious obligations, and therefore they have rights before God. Because they do those things, but they don't have any rights. Their rights are fulfilled in their life when they believe in what Jesus did. And this is something very personal, very intimate. I think that this way I'm answering a lot of people who ask, Oh, Bishop, I have the Holy Spirit, but I have this infirmity. How is it possible? How can we conciliate the presence of God in our lives and at the same time an infirmity? Well, that's for you to see how much of a clay we are. We are only clay. The vessel is of clay. The content on the inside is pure gold, the Holy Spirit. But the vessel will always be clay, always, until the day that we shall be covered by God's grace, by God's glory, when we are joined to Him in heaven. So that's how it works. If you are a religious person, I think that when a person fulfills their obligations properly, then by default, in their conscience and in their subconscious, they say like this, Oh, okay, I do everything right, I make no mistakes, I don't do anything wrong, I don't kill, don't steal, as if sin was just to kill, steal, sleep around. No. Sin is everything that contradicts the Word of God, His guidance, His discipline. This is sin.
because by doing so, a person transgresses his word. So it's not because I fulfill my obligations before God, because I'm here every day preaching with or without a flu. It doesn't matter. I have the right to have good health when I take possession when I take possession of what is mine. And this is faith. When we place the cards on the table and say, Lord, I don't accept this. I get revolted. Remember that Jesus said that since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God is taken by force, by violence. Violence. The word is violence. And only the violent, meaning those who go against themselves, can enter the kingdom of God. And I have to go against myself in order for me to possess, to take possession of what is mine. Physical health, physical health as well as spiritual, is a right we have. I have this right, you have this right, all of us. But who receives it? Who takes possession of it? Only those who believe. Those who apply to their life what is written. No, I don't accept this. When a person is convinced of this reality, of this promise, they take possession of it with violence. For example, you, you found out about an inheritance that was left for you by a family member. You didn't know about it. So, since you didn't know about this inheritance, you continued to live in misery. However, from the moment that you find out that there is an inheritance, there is an inheritance that is left for you, not properly perhaps registered in the registry, but in heaven, in the books of heaven. It's registered there in heaven, what Jesus did. It's registered in his word. He took upon himself our pains and infirmities, our curses, our sins. The fact is that sometimes we have faith to take possession, for example, of forgiveness, right? You have faith to take possession of forgiveness, the one that Jesus granted when he died on the cross. But you take possession of it. You believe. You take possession. You are forgiven. And the Holy Spirit confirms this in you. But when it comes to a physical infirmity, it shouldn't be different. You must take possession of it. And to take possession of it is not to go there and say, Oh, I have rights, Mr. Judge. No. Because I have here an inheritance in my name and all, there's something left here for me. The judge will say, prove to me. So we have to prove with the word, with a testament, with what is written there, the inheritance is left for us, our name is there. Did you understand, dear friends? So you, you have to fight, you, you have to go against yourself, in order to possess that. It might happen that you receive it straight away. A penny drops and something opens in your mind and you are like, wow, this is it. And you receive it because things happening here, it happens inside of us, in your soul. So you take possession. However, if we don't take possession, then it stays there. It gets delayed. You see, for example, we had a testimony. It was very beautiful. 
and I made sure to post it. Miss Sandra, if I'm not wrong, she, when she got the results from her medical exams, the doctor said to her, listen, you have cancer. And she said, no, it can't be. Straight away, she said, no. But the doctor said, here's the result. It's cancer. You have to undergo the treatment. She said, no, I don't accept it. She straight away rebuked that, refused that diagnosis. She fought against that idea that science had determined. Listen, you have cancer. If she, I ask you, if she had accepted, oh, but it's a medical exam, the doctor is saying it, then she would have to do a surgery and so on and so forth. But straight away, straight away, when she found out about the cancer, she said, no, I didn't inherit this. This is not mine. This isn't mine. And she fought with God. She said, Lord, I don't accept this. I'm just giving this example for you to understand the mystery of faith, the secrets of faith. Because faith is not, you know, this loose thing that you can do whatever you want with it. No, you have to go against yourself. And obviously, when she violated herself, she even scared the doctor because the doctor said, no, my daughter, listen here, it's, it's what it says here. But she said, no, this is not true. This is very nice, very nice testimony. And I see that God is so merciful that he allows us to see testimonies that are true stories checked by science itself, human science. And he proves that he is still the same. What he promised, he fulfilled, he fulfills, and he will fulfill in the life of everyone who believes. But for sure, a person has to go against themselves. They have to transgress their good education. They have to be violent. This is very nice. Therefore, dear friends, divine health is a right that you have. Whatever your need, your problem, your situation might be, your disease, your infirmity, Jesus already carried it upon himself. And he left it as an inheritance for you, for me, for all of us. But only those who believe will receive it. But to believe how? The way that we already said, you take possession of it, you violate yourself, you violate science, you contradict science itself. Of course that you're going to be called a fool, crazy, fanatic, but you've got to pay the price. Did you understand? So don't you worry, oh, I have the Holy Spirit, how come I have the Holy Spirit and I have this infirmity? You need to know that our vessel is of clay, pure clay. However, when you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is pure gold inside of this vessel. The vessel will get undone, but the Spirit will live for all eternity. All right? May God bless you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, by the way, you who have any sort of spiritual problems or emotional problems, or for example, you suffer with anxiety, nervousness, fear, constant headaches, you don't know the root of the problem or this headache, and you feel like killing yourself, for sure, this is a work that the pastors can do to remove this unclean spirit that is making you not sleep at night 
having insomnia, nervousness, or an addiction, any problem that is from a spiritual point of view that you have no strength to fight against by yourself, then today in all the universal churches of the kingdom of God, there is a work to undo the works of witchcraft, black magic, voodoo, to remove every curse that is in your life at any universal church of the kingdom of God, and it's free of charge. You don't need to pay anything, not even parking. Not even parking. Do you see? May God bless you all, and I'll see you tomorrow. Praise God.